Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our text for today for Cantate Sunday is from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Dear family and friends, this is Cantati Sunday, and we have many good reasons to sing about what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. We also are celebrating this weekend the coronation of our King, King Charles. Now, as God's people, we think liturgically, we think very much practically about hands-on with life. We think about what God has done for us and we live, on, live it out in very practical ways as if we're going on a great journey, maybe on a road quest, if you'd will. Now, I don't know how you go on your road trips, but when we as a family make a long road trip, we've got a map in the car, old school, and we look at it carefully knowing what's coming next, what's coming next, on what major road and highway. Now that's for something really big. For something short, I've got a little piece of paper with directions going left, right, north, south, street, avenue, and any curves that are going to come up. But some of us, some of you, have a GPS in your vehicle. It'll give you directions It'll even tell you when to turn and how far up the street you've got to still go. There will be corrections when the wrong turn is taken. And even better, some of these GPSs, some of these computer programs, will tell you the best route to, ta route to take based on current traffic conditions. That is so cool. <coughs> this little thing will let you know where to go and direct which way to go. It will say, this is the way. In the scriptures today that we've had, Jesus shows where and how, directing us and how to live as believers in this life, the journey of being a believer. This is the life for everyday disciples like you and like me. He says of himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. With Jesus, we know the way, 
for this is the way. Jesus started out by saying, do not let your hearts be troubled, trust in me. Believe and trust. But then there are two very prominent questions that come up from the disciples, and they're very much my sort of questions and maybe yours too. Thomas and Philip ask, where are you going? And second question, show us the Father. These are the questions of troubled hearts. Troubled hearts very much like my own and maybe your own. These are questions when we hurt physically, emotionally, psychologically. It is for ourselves and yes, it is also for loved ones. When we're anxious about life changes, the small little things for some of us, and certainly the enormously big ones. And there's a real strange scale there, isn't there? We can be a little bit anxious about, well, do I boil or fry the eggs for lunch? You can say that's silly, but it still can be a concern. But what about the enormous ones? Do I run and turn left or right as I'm being bombed in Odessa? As we were called to pray for this past week by our resident pastors there. That is huge. We sometimes can feel lost and insignificant. Where, where God are you? Could you show us your father? We can feel so hurt. We can feel so pressed because of sin and wrong actions all around us, pressing in on us. It is in my city. It's in my province. It's in my country. How about you? It's at my work. It's at my church. It's in my association. How about you? It's in my family. How about yours? It's even in my heart. How about yours? Those things are closer still. Heart and family. And we can feel lost and significant. And we see rightly, as did Philip and Thomas, basically, where are you, God? Where are you going, Jesus? Stay with us. And there, right then and there, he looks him in the eye. He looks me and you in the eye. And he says, you know where I'm going. You know that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus answers that where he's going has to do with mansions, which are being secured for you and for me. He's not going to downtown Jerusalem to the Holiday Inn Express getting ready with rooms and sheets and pillows and maybe a bit of a banqueting ticket. No. He's talking about eternal life itself. He says, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. And if you don't believe me, at least believe the words and the works themselves. Are they not the expression of the Father in your midst? When we call out to God, what are you like? When we say to that, well, what is God like? God actually has an answer for us. Look at Jesus. That is what I, Father God, am like. That is what God the Creator is like. That is what God is like coming to save people. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way leading to resting places, and his work is to prepare it with the fullness of his death on the cross, forgiving sin and every barrier that we think could be there, including our anxieties, and giving us resurrection, saying, this is what your life will be like because this is what the Father wants for you, for me, for all humanity, for restoration of creation itself, and giving us peace and purpose, walking with him who is the way. This is 
the way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And what does this mean for believers? Well, it's all about Jesus' mission for humanity and creation and even our involvement in it because he's given it to us as well. Hmm. An example. What does it mean for believers? Um, if you're into Star Wars even a little bit, there is on the Disney Channel a new series of programs called The Mandalorian and things about the character Boba Fett. Um, they're all adaptations of a greater story. Now, whether you've seen it or not, there's a continual discussion between all these characters about how to resolve a problem, how to deal with it, and how to get at it in the best possible way with all the twists and turns. And sooner or later, one character will say to another, this is the way, and the response is, this is the way. There's always this strange liturgical conversation and resolve going on. For us, as a people of worship and of scriptural liturgy, Jesus at the center of all way and truth and life, we look to Jesus who says of himself, way, truth, and life, for this is the way. He is the way. He is the way because I cannot do it myself. He's a way to those mansions, to the resurrection, to restoration, to life that is everlasting. He is truth. In a world of lies and self-deceit, yours, mine, you name it. He gives truth in a world and life of uncertainty that is heartbreaking and disruptive. He gives life. He gives life based in forgiveness with the defeat of death itself for you, my friends, for you. Following Christ on his way, speaking the truth he has proclaimed, living now with his love and forgiveness can be costly, we know that. But you know what? It was so incredibly costly to him to come into a world like ours of uncertainty and sin and death and just madness. And yet, he said it, he lived it, he proved it, that you are worth it. If you do not believe me, he says to Philip, to Thomas, to us, trust the words I speak of the Father. Trust the deeds I do of the Father. For he is the way, this is the way, Jesus is the way. Pastor Munt, Dr. Munt, says hello and he shared a really kind of cute wee story this week, a meme I think it's called, on Facebook. It's a little kid looking at you like this with his finger out pointing towards you. Don't worry about dying. You will live forever. All you have to worry about is location, location, location. This is the way going with Jesus to the resurrection to those mansions, the resting places, as he said. And what we are doing on the way is incredibly life-giving. I mean, listen to Jesus' words to his disciples, then and now. Truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. 
the works that you and I are going to undertake as individual believers, as the church, as we're called to do so, are even greater, he says, than his own. He was just one physical person working in his world. And when he ascends, goes to the Father, he sends me and sends you. He just sends disciples then, those 12 fearful sort of batting it back and forth men and their friends who become apostles. And he does so send us as every disciple since then. That includes me, that includes you. This is personal, by the way. When Jesus says this is the way that we will live and die, we also know that we will gain and that we share this gain and we rejoice in this gain, and we certainly sing about this gain as people of a cantate Sunday, of liturgy, of ceremony, which is purposeful, which is scripturally based, which has that which gives life. We've seen a whole lot of ceremony at the coronation, haven't we? Well, my goodness me, there is a ceremony of heaven the liturgy of heaven, which is acted out and lived out and proclaimed week by week, Sunday by Sunday, in every confessional church. We are given the forgiveness we need, reminded that we are cleansed, sent forth with God's words, sent forth with the Holy Spirit, sent forth with Jesus Christ, sent forth with the Father who we know because of Jesus, into a world where we can sing, we are the troubadours, the advertisers, the people that live as his representative. We live in a country where we have a king, where we represent a greater king, Jesus Christ, crucified and resurrected for me, for you, for all. And on the way to where he's going to bring us, to what he's prepared for us, he says, hey, talk with me. Ask me in my name, according to my way, my truth, and life, and I will give it to you. I will do it, are his words, he says. This is the way. Amen. Thank you. Shout to